Hi, welcome back to Blackjack. Thank you for coming to the stream yesterday. And if you didn't, then that's great too. I'm. It told me it was loaded onto YouTube, but apparently I'm the only one who can see it. So I don't know what's going on with it. Anyway, uh, today's death battle I've actually been looking forward to, despite never having actually played any of the games. Uh, I've never played Resident Evil. I've never played Dead Rising. However, I have played as Frank West because I've played uh, Project X Zone or Project Cross Zone or however you're supposed to be saying it. In which he teams up with uh, Senko or Shenko or I cannot remember how to pronounce her name from Darkstalkers, a little vampire girl who's also a master of improvised weaponry, sort of. I mean, she carries all kinds of random objects around with her and her robes. And, yeah, you know, she probably pre-selects them, so it's probably not nearly as improvised. But she probably taught Frank how to fight with a whole bunch of this weird-ass shit. Um, I know Resident Evil was in that, but I think it was just Jill Valentine and Nemesis. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember if Leon was in it. Uh, I almost said Chris Redfield. Is that even the same series? I, 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 that's how little I know about Resident Evil, though. Aside from that 7 has nothing to do with the rest of the games, and it's apparently better than all of them. Anyway. Okay. I have, uh, the closest thing I have to a relevant shirt is Jack Skellington. Uh, so, shall we get into it? It's a dead man's party, after all. Who could ask for more? Everybody's coming, they say. Just, you know, remember to leave your body at the door. I know I'm having some audio problems. I can't figure out how to fix them. There's like a hiss. Surviving the undead apocalypse takes grit, perseverance, and an army's worth of firepower. You don't With all that you and some this. luck, these two okay. became experts in zombie fighting. Yeah! John Kennedy, the top cop and government agent in Resident Evil. And Frank West, the backyard wrestling MacGyver of Dead Rising. He's <laughs> MacGyver, yeah, that's a good comparison. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. Those peasants. Who would win a death battle? I did see, like, the first minute of this on, um... As a child, Leon Scott their, um, Kennedy's father instilled in him a cast of death battle. Of justice. Following in his footsteps, yeah. Leon joined the police force, determined to uncover the darkest riddles and uphold the law. So, for his first ever assignment, he took the biggest challenge he could find. Instead of picking an easy job like dishing out dastardly parking tickets, he was off to Raccoon City to investigate a bunch of mysterious murders. His instincts nice, were good, nice. perhaps too good. Officer Kennedy wound up choosing the most challenging and dangerous assignment he possibly could have. Yeah, it turns yeah. out Trash Panda Town was due for a big old zombie outbreak, and Leon got due stuck in the middle. How's huh? that for hazing the rookie? Wasn't a rookie for long. After fending oh, hey, he's my age. And even or taking a bullet from the another crazy knoll, Leon was bit. recruited by the American government as a special agent, bodyguard, and their go to specialist for apocalyptic events. In all cases, if people who are bitten become infected themselves and go on to attack others, the only way to stop the spread of infection is to destroy the infected's brains. Cool. Shoot them in the head. His training at the police academy turned him into a pretty tough guy. Although, but as a I have to say, because you can technically survive being shot in the head, depending on, you know, where and everything, does the same apply to zombies, or does any sort of blow to the head, or blow into the head do it? Special agent, he became unstoppable. All thanks to his extensive firearms training, extreme driving tests, and the study of tactical response scenarios. Extreme Guess what driving. martial art they teach American Secret Service members? A traitorous Russian one called Sistema, and Leon is an expert at it. Sistema is a free-form martial art focusing on disabling targets via pressure points and joints. While not specifically lethal on its own, Sistema also involves quite a lot of training with knives and firearms. That's sounds like something sounds sneaky, though. I don't think Fist would be enough to take on monsters like the tyrants, skinless dogs, and... Is that Gene Simmons? <laughs> right, these bio <laughs> No, I think that's Venom. ...B.O.W.s were far tougher than your ordinary run-of-the-mill zombie. Thankfully, Leon has the weaponry to take them on. He's efficient with just about any kind of gun, but like me, he loves carrying around his face. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is extremely low volume. I've tried this in every sort of combination. Um, no, no. 
And the only way that I could be heard over this is for me to have my volume down. It sounds fine to you right now, um, because I'm looking at the end product. Athena, no, honey, you can't bite the equipment, all right? Is it big baby? Yeah, that's fine. Mm, want to go pet? No, okay, you don't want to go pet. Anyway, okay. Um... Oh, sorry, allergies. I do this as like a, like, because that's what people in cartoons and movies do, but that just kind of makes it worse, doesn't it? That's what you gotta do. Anyway, I have been focusing and refocusing on how to do this audio, and Death Battle, well, not even just Death Battle, everything I was calibrating on, just the... When it sounds fine to me, it sounds so overwhelmingly loud on the recording. And that's what happened with Thor vs. Wonder Woman, where you could not hear a freaking word I said. That's why. Athena, I know these headphones are basically shot, but you gotta stop, okay? You better stop. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to anyway. Okay, remember, I also make these videos to show you what life in a parrot is like. Anyway, uh, just so you know, I'm probably going to have to stop and go over this quite a bit because otherwise I'm just losing it and then you get something like last month where I was just like, whew, or last episode where I was basically just in the dark the entire time because I could not pay attention to anything that was happening. Including the Silver Ghost, a unique pistol specifically designed for him. He's also got a modified 50 caliber Desert Eagle oh, Magnum a gift gun. from his father. Lucky bastard, all I ever got from my dad was a sore cheek. While he has no problem dueling, then why do you want to find him so bad? Leon is extremely proficient in dealing damage with heavier weapons, such as the M203 grenade launcher or his ludicrous rocket launcher special. This red-tipped wrecker of an RPG is far more powerful than an ordinary propelled grenade. The gun itself looks similar to a classic RPG-7 model, first used as an anti-tank weapon by the Soviet Union. Since the red grenade is so deadly, it's probably a thermobaric explosive booster, which can launch over 600 feet for a 60-foot-wide explosion. That's nice. more than enough to take down one of those bow-wows. Leon has plenty of experience with hand grenades, rifles, flamethrowers, etc. He was, like, right next to them. stands above them all. His knife. All right. Yeah. Leon's combat knife is way more than... Cut through a padlock. Nice. Practically magic when it comes to his skill with a knife. And if he gets hit, he'll be fine. Probably. I mean, he's wearing lightweight level 3 tactical body armor, which can stop bullets from a magnum. Why does N tough to steal core body armor? He's carrying some healing herbs, which he can also take a hit from, if you know what I'm saying. Hang on. So, are we talking absolute top of the line 2018? Or are we talking about absolute top of the line whenever he most recently made a game appearance? I mean, either way, you know. It's still going to be really tough, but just it's probably not even going to have a bearing into the battle, but it'd be nice to know. And also, um, if they're going, if they mention the submachine gun, that means Frank's going to have his uh, special weapon for uh, doing something really, really hard in the game, which is the freaking Mega Buster. That's gonna be. Fun. He's not snorting drugs, Boomstick. <laughs> Healing herbs have a history of being applied as an aerosol spray or ground up with a patient. It's well, the once Leon became the government's numero uno answer to all their zombie problems, he was stopping outbreaks all over the world. He How does he have lots, such nice hair awesome for all to do it. it? He even had to make some horrible sacrifices along the way. Like that poor, poor Ducati. Leon is strong enough to crush a skull or even force open the jaws of a giant infected shark. The shark appears to be similar in size to a great white, which has a bite strength of nearly two tons of force. Wow. That shit's crazy. And speaking of which, let's do uh, a bit of... Next to only have a weak jaw when compared to other animal species, they rely more on their teeth than bite force, although they're also really freaking big. I mean, although the biggest shark um, doesn't. 
you, like, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> the whale shark. That's more than two. They're like really big rocks. Think you would know that. Well, he fought Chris Redfield to a standstill, the famous boulder puncher himself. And while Leon doesn't seem to have Chris's brute strength, he did push over this giant rock with a little help. Okay, Leon is so pretty quick too. He's dodged bullets, a moving laser, bird, and even a racing pirate, which, according to the Inside of Biohazard Guide, could run up to 43 miles per hour. He's even thrown his trusty knife fast enough that this creepy guy didn't even react until, uh, oh. The average time for a person to perceive and react to movement is a quarter of a second. <laughs> Leon appears to be about 30 feet away from his target Salazar here, meaning he threw his knife around 80 miles per hour. Not the bad, not bad. For most world-class knife throwers, is only 35 miles per hour, so he's more than double that. Okay, lady, the trick with knife throwing, the... That kind of thing is that the knife is supposed to be, like, tucked back under the pocket or something like that, and then the knife comes out from behind the lady on the board. <laughs> so they just did that for real, huh? Okay, but I missed uh, what the record is. Threw his knife around 80 miles per hour. The average okay. speed for most world-class knife throwers is only is... 35 miles per hour. So okay, 35. Leon is tough, having survived and I was right, Chris is from large and burly BOWs. He even matched the strength of Umbrella Agent Jack Krauser. Krauser was strong enough to perform a 30-foot vertical jump. Generally, men can pull off a 2-foot vertical jump at most, making Krauser potentially 15 times stronger than the average man. Or he just has point, just uh, more... Butt. like, higher athletic capability. Uh... It's not necessarily transferring to physical strength. It's only that you can uh, push your own body weight, you know, which is centered on your body and kind of doing this motion around me. Basically superhuman. It's like he has zero weaknesses. Oh, contra boomstick. Leon has his fair share of baggage. He's pretty gullible, oftentimes tricked by those wilier than himself. <laughs> Save yourself. Is it just me, or does everybody always ignore what I say? Like her? You think he just might be trying to get laid? Lord knows I've done a few dumb things on that quest. Okay. I don't know about his chances, though. Rock okay. Was, uh, Ada Wong, is that her name? I just remember the red dress. Um, uh, but I don't remember if that's... From this series, or is that from Parasite Eve? Which I also never played. In that hairdo. But after more than this hair is nice. years of nightmarish catastrophes, Leon's mental state has become more fragile and more reliant on alcohol. Ah, you and me both, pal. He always needs a little chaos in his life. And when it comes down to it, that's what makes him such a freaking badass. Better try a <gasps> trick, because that one's getting old. Okay, give me just a minute. Athena needs to be put back in her cage. Okay. Yeah, you know what you did. You bit me really hard on the thumb. Still know if you could see that, but she kind of made a pock mark there. Like I said, I make these in part to show you what having birds is like. I'm in fact record okay good. It did go back. Upon first impression, Frank West seems to just be your average journalist, but he's far more than that. I'll say he's covered wars, you know. As a fellow <laughs> journalist, Frank Wolf beyond the call of duty to uncover his next big scoop. It was this he's covered wars, kind of determination which led him to a mall in the town of Willamette, Colorado, where he found the zombie. As opposed to anywhere in the actual Willamette Valley. I'm just putting that out there. Apocalypse. What? Did you just say zombies? But Frank's down to yes. up dozens of zombies every now and then. And with his wrestling history and battlefield experience, he's got the skills to do it. Excuse me. <laughs> never having fired a gun at another person before Willamette, Frank discovered he's a natural when it comes to fire. So he's done target really? I've done target like really. Pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and a beautiful 
beautiful mini gun. Toilet plunger. Nikon D100. specifically designed for government agent Leon. Hey, wait a minute. But bullets can only last so long against a Oh, that's going to be fun. Wait a minute. Frank was forced to improvise. And thanks to being in a shopping mall, he had plenty of options. Hey, what kind of mall has a grocery store in? Chainsaws to out of the box picks like shampoo, lipstick, lawnmowers, and a shopping cart. Frank has an uncanny ability to effectively weaponize pretty much anything he gets his hands on. Nice. Garbage, toys, food, you name it. This guy does not overlook anything's death dealing potential. He even uses his camera flesh as a weapon. His That's primary cool. camera appears to be a Nikon D100. Which has a flash color temperature of 6000K or crystal white. When used up close, it's nearly as effective on the eyes as a flashbang grenade. Nice! Anyway, Frank survived the zombie horde with blind color. His next step was obvious profit from it. He became famous overnight. He was you punched that man. Hosted a TV show and scored all sorts of endorsements. His love of using baseball bats to smash zombie skulls in even landed him a great commercial deal with Deadwood Pro Baseball. When it comes to baseball, I know which bat is going to get the job done. Only a dead wood bat gives me the quality, the reliability, and the power I need to crack on with my workout. Choose quality. Choose a dead wood. The pro's choice. Damn, so he's making tons of money off of killing people. My dream. I know, right? All these zombies were technically people once, so when you really think about it, this whole situation is... And he can destroy the entire town. And that's what gives him the Mega Buster. Uh, huh. Anyway, fame is a fickle mistress, and it wasn't long until Frank's bad minutes of fame were cut short. He eventually became a college teacher, but not before several more encounters with the undead kind. And the more he fought him, the more creative he got. <laughs> Frank's greatest asset is his impressive ingenuity. With nothing but his blood, sweat, and tears, managed to load a duct tape. Frank yeah. perfected the art of combination weapons. A like the paddle on saw, where he took a kayak paddle and strapped on a couple chainsaws for a rip roaring good time. The elect you know, Ash Williams versus Juliet Starling would be a really good thing, except he's already kind of implied to be her father, <laughs> or at least someone who's exactly like. <laughs> Slicicle. Nice. Crusher is an invention combining the power of a car battery with the weight of a sledgehammer, crafting a mule near for mortal. The flex uh, creek is a freaking wheelchair powered by a car battery. What? Hang on. Well, just swinging a car battery around would not give you the charge from it. You'd have to be getting power from some other way. I mean, I could just, you know, take my remote batteries here. That's not an electric attack. Yeah, Frank, that is some bullshit. Firing machine guns all over the place. Stephen Hawking could have even beat dead with that. He can make a laser sword by sticking a gem into a flashlight. Okay. Don't ask me how. And the Reaper is the unholy union of sickle and samurai sword. Nice. Wow. No, that is just scratching the surface. He's even got combo vehicles like the Exo Suit. That's a suit made of slurping machines. Nice. Which shoots ice tornadoes. Talk about cool, pun intended. It's gonna Even smell strange, fantastic. Frank has used an arcade machine to miraculously copy some of the powers of fellow Cammy? You're a wizard, Frankie. No, he's not magic. These powers come directly from costumes most commonly obtained from the machine. For example, he can don Ryu's key to perform hurricane kits, or Mega Man X's armor complete with a Mega Buster. You are what you wear. Speaking of costume changes, sadly, <laughs> Frank eventually was caught by zombies and wound up becoming another mindless slave of the undead horde. But it's okay, he got better. Frank has pulled off a lot of impressive feats. He lost all his zombie abilities and cannot call upon them anymore. I, good, I was gonna say, if he does that, then Leon kinda has the advantage. Okay. But that would mean he can't... Like, there's no use in bringing it up. Little formal training aside from maybe a three-day combat journalist crash course, he's killed hundreds, maybe thousands of zombies, giving him one of the highest body counts in video game history. Nice. He's really strong, too. He can pull a zombie's limbs and head off no problem. 
Fought off zombies for 72 hours. You're going with that achievement, huh? And he's quick enough to catch up to and board a train moving 15 miles per hour in less than three seconds. He can even hop off zombies' heads like a ninja so well that the zombies barely even notice. Wait, they don't notice that he's literally jumping off their heads? How the hell does he pull that off? Very careful. But Frank has fought more than just mindless zombies. Yeah, like some crazy clowns with chainsaws and a freeze gun, and plenty of other psychomaniacs. This is my stuff! Including Lance Corporal Calder, the world's first intelligent soldier zombie. Also, okay. I think it's important to note many of these feats were performed in a span of 72 hours with no sleep or rest. According to a study on sleep deprivation, <laughs> Hi, Batman. an average human's physical and mental health begins to severely deteriorate after 36 hours of no sleep, oh. resulting in disorientation and even hallucinations. Here I thought heavy drinking was the only way to legally hallucinate. Well, time to binge Netflix until I trip balls. Whether by inhuman stamina or <laughs> No, man. You know what Salvador Dali did? A cross between sleep deprivation and camembert cheese. <laughs> uh, it, they're not going with the Mega Buster. I'm very surprised. And it seems like Frank has greater endurance. Adrenaline. Frank was in peak condition for twice as long as he should have been. Yeah. There's sure. that journalist determination again. Sure, he may be a bit of a self-serving asshole, but he's pulled off the impossible more than once. Boom. Even when he got into his 50. Once a survivor, always a survivor. Snag your very own disposable digi-cheap disposable cash. It's fantastic. I mean... Seriously, I need a raise. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the combatants. So is he gonna have access to all those costumes? But first, let me tell you about how you can be the MacGyver of the kitchen. No. I'm not going with Blue Apron. Okay, um Leon has so much more combat training. Um he's much more of a powerful figure, I would say. Frank strikes me as more durable, not just in um, hits. Well, I guess maybe not in hits, but um, as far as uh, mentally, uh, or basically mentally, he's not just um, going for 72 hours straight. God, I think my record is 48. <laughs> um, he also... Uh, Oh, pardon me. Uh, he's also far more creative. Leon doesn't seem to improvise at all. He's very standard. Um, I mean, it, it was talking about his uh, Tommy gun. I think that's what they mean by submachine gun, right? You guys got to teach me about heavy weaponry? Uh, let's see, though. Frank has uh, improvised armor. Uh, I don't know how long it takes him to make any of them. But Leon has the combat training and is far more battle ready. Oh, goodness. They didn't get into Shenko at all. I was surprised. I mean, I guess not really because it was a side game and it's not really canon, but still, you know, they at least showed um, Marvel vs. Capcom. And they didn't show any Project X Zone, really? Or Cross Zone? It's an X! It's not a plus, which would be a cross, okay? I don't know why they do that. Anyway. Okay. I'm just gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna go with Frank. I love those texts. Looters, you say? Sweet! Just what I was looking for. Surfbot! What are you doing here? No one's supposed to be here. Never stopped me before, pal. <laughs> okay, now I saw after basically where the zombies come in. Oh, 
wait. But Leon can disarm him. Hmm. But he can't knock his clothes off. Woo! Fuck you, love Frank. Nice. There we go! We're rocking into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, boys. Shouldn't you be working together? Arcade game, the game. Oh god, he's bad box art, Mega Man. Sort of. Dodge. Following him into the arcade. Whoa, you're getting cocky. Okay, Doctor Strange. Ah, that's gonna be a nice one. That's gonna be really interesting. Okay. And, uh, sorry I was wrong, but they didn't get into Leon's creativity in battle. Um, and they didn't really fight long enough to, uh, be 
to get the endurance going. Because, um, honestly, uh, neither one of them would know the other's limits, and they would, really, they would want to get the battle done as fast as possible. Especially with zombies encroaching on everyone. Although, honestly, boys, you have a common foe, and it's much more dangerous than someone looting a mall. <laughs> Priorities, gentlemen, please. Okay, next time looks interesting. Um, not nearly as interesting, though. <laughs> uh. Okay, so most of this video was taken up by Tina and her bad behavior. You need to keep your beak to yourself. Oh, but I love that little schlub anyway. Hmm. So, what I'm going to do right now is I am going to go... Well, first I'm going to go get something to eat. I'm starting to have the burps, and I don't know why. Oh, hey, I'm very, very tired. I only slept maximum five hours. See, I cannot do what Frank does. I cannot do what Leon does. On the other hand, it means I'll uh, never become a washed-out alcoholic. At least not for those reasons. Also because I hate the taste of alcohol. Like... It's just seriously gross to me. <laughs> One time my cousin came back from Germany, and I was like, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 at the time, and, uh, yeah, she brought German beer, and, yeah, you know where this is going. And so I was like, can I have some? And my parents were like, yeah, you can have a little bit. You know, we're all right here. So I'm like, sip. And then I had to go wash my mouth out. It was disgusting. Anyway, okay, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Do you guys like my comical asides, my personal history, and so on and so on and so on? And so you know, I am going to be covering E3 this year. At least I'm going to be covering Nintendo, because that's the systems that I have. Um, Okay, what did they say on the end of this one? What did, what, uh... Frankly uh, on his game, blah, 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 the blah, winner. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, they gave a date, didn't they? Yeah, I realized that the fate was like the hell of a Okay. Oh, June 13th, that's my birthday! Okay, and that's going to be after E3, because Nintendo does their E3 on the 12th. But yes, that's going to be an interesting birthday present, although I would have preferred one of the matchups I want to see. I think my absolute long shot for the battle I want to see is Elliot from Leverage versus Agent 47. Both very creative heavies. Um, I mean, it, it's been stated that Elliot has destabilized entire countries, taken down uh, military forces just on his own. But, on the other hand, it would probably also be kind of a stealth battle as well, and Elliot is not much for stealth. And he just does not blend in, even when they were undercover at a cooking school. He was, you know, like, jamming knives into the cutting board and all of that, which is actually really bad for the cutting board. And the knife, but... Anyway, okay, tell me what obscure battles you want to see, and your long shots that will never in a million years happen. Um... I think everything I did a video about before, including Harley Quinn versus Domino, and yes, I know there was a um, one-minute me or not one-minute melee uh, DBX with that, but that was the wrong Domino. Okay, I don't want to see the one from Marvel Comics. I want to see the one from Pokemon. I want to see the Black Tulip in a battle. Eh, I mean, I, I think she would lose to Harley, but still. Anyway. Also, like I said, um, Ash Williams versus Juliet Starling. I think that would be fun. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm just traveling at this point. Like I said, I've got five hours of sleep at the absolute most. Okay, alright. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop.